Bless her in Jesus' name. Bryce Crawford preaches the gospel to satanic people in, and you're not gonna believe the response. So shout out to him and you can click the link in the description, follow him and check out his whole video. And make sure to watch at the end because I have a Bible verse that will tie all of this together. Let's get into it. Have you ever heard, heard about Jesus before? I'm secular. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah. I mean, I used to not be a Christian. I, and I grew up, I went to a private Christian school and everything. And then almost four years ago, I was going to take my life one night and I had a radical encounter with Jesus. Well, I'm happy that you have found a place in your life that is good for you. Uh -huh. I'm going to try to keep working the crowd, so. Yeah. Would, it be, would it be okay if I at least prayed for you and blessed you before I left? You can do whatever you want. Is that okay? Yeah, just people might still keep coming up to me to take pictures. Yeah, that's okay. Is okay. it okay if I take your hand and just pray for you? Sure, why what's, not? What's your name? Goat girl. What is it? Goat, Goat girl. Goat girl. Yeah. Goat girl. So does she like people take pictures of her or something? Get they they get to take pictures with her or something? <laughs> I guess. Awesome. Jesus, thank you for my friend God. We just bless her in Jesus' name. God, I thank you that you introduced. That's crazy right there sister jesus would you just reveal yourself to her in dreams and visions god we thank you for this interaction we bless her and we just ask that you show that you're the one true almighty god in jesus mighty name amen jesus really loves you he changed my life he became the hope of my life i was hopeless literally going to take my life and then jesus encountered me and so that's why i travel the world and try to bless people hope you have a blessed day i hope people really love on you today yeah bless you man take care it says free hugs from satan so that is interesting. I love that he just said, you know, Jesus loves you. I love his approach. I think he does a great job. Super cool. Um, now this guy is interesting. He wants free hugs from Satan. I don't know. I don't think I would go up to someone who says free hugs from Satan. I don't think I would go up to someone who says free hugs from Jesus either. We're here in Salem. It's popular for Satanism and stuff like that. Do you follow Satanism or anything like that? Nope. I'm agnostic. Oh, you're agnostic, but you're just a Satan for the spirit of this. How long have you been agnostic for? Uh, since I was 15. Since you were 15, and what led you to agnosticism? Uh, let's just say a lot of prayers that needed to be answered never were. Oh, wow. So you grew up Christian? Catholic. Catholic, and then, and then you were crying out to God, Correct. and then nothing. Correct. What exactly were you crying out to God for, if you don't mind me asking? Because that, that has me curious. My father was uh, dying. And wow. I was asking for it not to happen. Wow. So, when I was young, it didn't work for me. So I, I didn't really resort to complete atheism. Yeah. Because I believe that might be something, but not yeah. necessarily, you know, the Christian idea of God in heaven. Yeah. Yeah. Dang. I totally understand. I actually. Um, my dad passed away too, and when I was younger, and I cried out to God, and he still died. He still passed away, but I would tell you the best thing about that is God does promise to be a father to the fatherless, and he's helped me get through those pains and sufferings, and, and he, he promises to comfort you in times of sorrow. Instead of pushing him away and blaming God for that, it's just realizing that we live in, we've live in a fallen world. Like, it's difficult. Sometimes God knows what's best for our lives, and he has a bigger plan. Maybe he got to go to heaven and be with Jesus, and and all of his pain and suffering was gone. But I get it. It's very hard. It's difficult. It, it messes with you, you know? Let's see what Bryce says here. See, um, when I was young, I grew up in Georgia. I, grew, I went to a private Christian school and everything. But I actually hated God because there were a lot of pastors in my community that were like telling me how to live my life. They were doing the total opposite. And then I actually lost my grandfather to pancreatic cancer. He was like my best friend. Because I went to Christian school, I was kind of like, they put a pressure on me to be like, hey, tell him about Jesus. And then he died. I was like, oh man, really? I was like, man, God, God caused this. I was like, God caused this and he took it away. And actually a few years later, I'd struggled with depression and anxiety for a long time. And uh, when I was 17 years old, I was actually, there was a night I was gonna take my life because I thought that was the only way to get like the depression and anxiety to go away. Mm -hmm. And then I had a radical encounter with Jesus. I didn't know what to think about it. And so I went in my car and I was like, all right, Jesus, if you're really real, take away my anxiety and depression because that felt incurable. And to me, in my eyes, the only way to take the pain away was to literally take my life. Right. But I was like, Jesus, if you're really real, take away my anxiety and depression. It's been almost four years and I haven't had anxiety or depression. There's suffering and death in the world. God's not causing it. You know, you grew up in a Catholic household. The Bible calls sin, wickedness, sin. Death is our punishment for disobedience to God. And in Catholicism, when you were growing up Catholic, did it ever feel like a cage of rules or 
something like that. That night when I had my encounter with Jesus, it wasn't like I was encountering that cage of rules anymore. It was like for the first time in my life, I didn't care about my life so much, Jesus decided to intervene in my life. And I realized that he actually loved me and that was the whole purpose of him dying. Would it be okay if I just prayed for you, just prayed for peace and stuff like that? Right. Yeah, can I put a hand on your shoulder? Right ahead. What was your name? Dan. Dan, nice to meet you, Dan. Jesus, I thank you so much for Dan. God, I thank you that we got to meet. Jesus, I ask that you just reveal yourself to him in dreams and visions and send people his way to show your heart to him, God. Man, he, he's not totally given up. He does believe that there's a higher power. And so, Jesus, I truly believe that you are the way, that you're the one true God. Would you just send more people his way to encourage him and love him well and show him that you are the one true God who sees him and loves him and cares about him. In Jesus' name, amen. One more thing I want to tell you. If I want to know you, Dan, I could talk to like your friends, I could talk to your family and everything like that. And that would kind of like fill in the picture of who you are. Right. But if I really wanted to get to know you, I would just go to you. I want to encourage you. Because if you say that you believe that there's something out there, you just don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. Would you go home tonight and actually ask God, say, hey, God, would you reveal yourself to me? Because I know when you were 15 years old, you said you cried out too many prayers. It never worked. But I believe that if you actually went home tonight and you cried out, I believe it'll show up because I know he heard those prayers. Bro. Every letter you've written to God, he's heard. Can I give you a hug? Is that okay? Love you, man. That's amazing. At least he believes that there's a God. He just doesn't know who and how that is. But yeah, if he really went to Jesus, not because of a religion, not because of other people telling him to. And I, yeah, if like what Bryce said, go call out the God. Ask him to reveal himself to you. I think you would. Or just knowing like if you just blindly say, I don't believe in God because you didn't answer your prayers. I don't think that's a viable option. You can look to the evidence and the historicity of Jesus and know like, he is who he says he is. Um, religion people fall short all the time. People in this world, in this church, they fall short because we're humans. But Jesus does it not. He is the same yesterday and today and forever. He is always good. He's always going to be there for you. And if you have a father figure in your life or someone that's passed away, guys, I encourage you to go to God. He will never leave you nor forsake you. He's a father to the fatherless. His name is the, the, the uh, Salem Satan. That's intense. So now I have a Bible verse that will tie all of this together. Jeremiah 29, 13 says, If you look for me wholeheartedly, you will find me. So guys, I encourage you to go to God today. Be in the scriptures. Look for evidence for Jesus. You know, look for, was he a real person? Did he actually exist? Did he actually say the things that he said he would do? Are the scriptures reliable? Are they translation after translation after translation? No, they're not. There are 5,700 Greek manuscripts that you can find, and it will help you realize the authenticity of Jesus and the reliability of who he said he was. And he didn't come here to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. So go to Jesus today. In the description below, you can decide to follow Jesus. It will walk you right through it to help you follow Jesus for the first time. I encourage you to do that today. That would be amazing. Anyway, guys, comment down below your thoughts on this. Whatever that may be, that would be amazing. Just know that he loves, know that Jesus loves you, and I love you too. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Peace. Shout out to Bryce in this amazing video.